Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his step, in his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a cult tied on which no one has ever sat, until it, untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door out in the open street and they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told him what Jesus had said and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments on it and he sat upon it, and many spread their garments on the road, and others spread leafy branches which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Let's now follow with Jesus and enter into the city of Jerusalem with the entrance hymn. The king of 
all glory comes the nation rejoices open the gates before him lift up your voices who is the king of glory what shall we call him he is emmanuel the promise of ages the king of glory comes the nation rejoices open the gates before him lift up your Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. He gave his life for us, a pledge of salvation. He took upon himself the sin of the nations. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. He conquered sin and death, he truly has risen. The nation rejoices Open the gates before him Lift up your voices Who is the King of glory? What shall be calling? He is Emmanuel The promise of ages The King of glory Comes the nation rejoices Open the gates before him Lift up your voices In all of Galilee In city or village He goes The nation rejoices, open the gates before him, lift up your voices. He conquered sin and death, he truly has risen, and he will share with us his heavenly kingdom. The king of glory comes, the nation rejoices, open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the king of glory? What shall we Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I hid not my face from shame and spitting, but I know that I shall not be put to shame. First reading, a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 7. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain a word him that is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious, I turned not back, backward. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting, for the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been confounded, therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response shall be, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, 
Why have you forsaken me? All who had seen me derided me. They curled their lips, they tossed their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him, let him release him, if this is his friend. Our response? My, my God, God, my God, God why, why have, have you, you forsaken me? Many dogs have surrounded me, a band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. Our response? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divided my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. Our response? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. Our response? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He humbled himself, therefore God has highly exalted him. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 6 to 11. Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Christ for our sins walked the path of obedience. according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests, the with the elders and scribes, and the whole council held a consultation and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. 
But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insur insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he was wont to do for them. And he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priest had delivered him up. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release for them, to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man whom you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, and they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and plaiting a crown of plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck his head with a reed, and spat upon him, and they knelt down in homage to him. And, they, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him off the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the, pa to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, and they offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple, destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests mocked him to one another with the scribes saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And one ran and filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that he thus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear friends, we heard the Passion reading of today from the Gospel of Mark. And as we reflect upon the different scenes that have taken place during this reading, we could recall plan to kill Jesus and anointing at Bethany in the first part. And we all know 
what took place at the house of Simon the leper. We observe the following things. The woman anointing Jesus was no other than Mary, the sister of Lazarus, grateful to him for having raised her brother back to life. This is in gratitude for the favor that Jesus had done to her brother, Mary anoints the feet of Jesus. And here John tells, in the Gospel of John we hear, that the main grumbler against her show of love was Judas, the traitor. When love is shown, the greedy people grumble. And that's what exactly happened in the house of Simon. Mary was acting out of love and gratefulness. Judas spoke out of greed, while the Jewish leaders moved out of hatred for Jesus. We certainly do not hate Jesus. Taking a personal reflection upon this scene or the plot to kill Jesus at Bethany. We often have allowed greed, pride and other motives to take possession of our heart and betray Jesus as Judas did. Let gratefulness for what Jesus has done for us lead us to love him above all things. Then we shall have the power to overcome temptation. This is the reflection that we could take from the scene one. Instead of grumbling and allowing our own pride and greed to overtake us, but reach out in gratefulness to serve Jesus. And the second plot, we could describe it as the responses at the Last Supper. How each one looks at Jesus and what Jesus has to tell us. Let's place ourselves also in the upper room together with these disciples and see how our responses to the farewell dinner that Jesus hosts in the upper room. How delicately Jesus prepared his last meal with his apostles. So do with us. How gently he warned them about dangers ahead. How generous he was with them when putting himself into their hands, the Holy Eucharist. We know that in the upper room, Jesus instru installs the Holy Eucharist and whereby we could have life from Jesus. In spite of it all, Judas betrayed him, Peter denied him, and all the apostles abandoned him. Jesus, out of love, hosting his last dinner, and what is in the heart of his own disciples, one was no, had no change at his heart, and he persistently decided to betray Jesus. Eating with him plans the betrayal of Jesus. And Peter says, I don't know him, eating and walking with Jesus, experiencing all the wonders Jesus has done, telling people, proclaiming it loud, I don't know him. And similarly, the other disciple just deserted him in the Garden of Gethsemane. What is our attitude today? How do we come to the celebration of this Eucharist? And after the Eucharist is over, do we also desert Jesus and live our own unconnected lives. Jesus is no less delicate and concerned with each one of us than he was with his disciples on the, way, on the eve of his passion. Not even the ungratefulness of all mankind put together would have prevented him from keeping on pouring out his love upon us. Jesus will leave no stone unturned to help us as temptation approaches, but he leaves us free to accept or reject the help he offers. He never intrudes into our lives. Whenever looking back at past spiritual failures, two things stand out prominently. Jesus never failed in helping us to overcome temptation. But we relied on our own strength as Peter did and went the way he did. And moving to the third scene in the Gospel of today, the scene at Gethsemane, we could recall the following reflections. Two things impress us when watching Jesus at Gethsemane. His real anguish at the thought of the suffering about to come upon him, an anguish the like of which no man has ever experienced, a loneliness to the point of begging his disciples to keep him company, and his trust in his father, who once more he calls by the name Abba, my daddy. 
Jesus' attitude at Gethsemane contains a precious lesson for us to remember in time of suffering. However deep our grief may be, it will never compare with that of Jesus at Gethsemane. The only way to face suffering successfully is through prayer. Let us get convinced that God is our loving Father, also in the time of suffering, that at no other time may we be so sure of His love as when we suffer. When you are suffering, you can really be confident and sure that God is at a cause distant from you. And from there, we move on to the uh, fourth scene in the gospel that we have read today. Jesus before the Sanhedrin, how he responded to them and to their plotting and to their short judgments, accusations and all that. And how should be our attitude when people accuse us and try to plot and take life away from us. Mark wrote his gospel after listening for years to Peter's preaching. It is curious that in the gospel of Mark, things which could bring praise to Peter are generally left out, while those bringing humiliation to him are given in detail. It must have been Peter himself who pressed his secretary Mark to do so. <coughs> generally, the winner writes only the victorious things about him. But Peter, knowing himself, he wanted to tell the truth and he wanted to tell people who he was and how Jesus has raised him in spite of all his failures and faults. He want Mark to write the truth, not <coughs> a concocted story or uh, leaving the truth away and writing glorious things about Peter. The leaders of the Jews accused Jesus and accused him falsely. They never accused themselves, but rather were keen to show their self-righteousness. Peter, on the contrary, accuses himself in his gospel in front of the whole <coughs> church of which Jesus had made him the head. While the, while the leaders drifted further and further from Jesus, Peter came closer and closer to him through acknowledging his, his sinfulness. There is no shorter road to God than that of getting convinced of one's own weakness. Face to face with the suffering Jesus, it should not be too difficult for us to get convinced of our sinfulness and Jesus' mercy. <coughs> this scene clearly explains to us our own lives, our own failures, and yet we need to be humble enough to accept our sinfulness and kneel down before Jesus and ask him to raise us up. And that's what Peter has done. And we know the success of Peter's too have stood on the same ground. Acknowledging their sins, acknowledging the sins of the church and still uh, standing faithful to the mission of Christ and being blessed and accompanied by Jesus. And with this, we come to the fifth plot in today's reading. Jesus and Pilate. <coughs> Mark narrates things in a very simple way, but the lessons behind his simple language are always deep. What would we do if we saw our own father falsely accused and a judge siding not with truth but with a false accuser? What would we do if we, had, we, if we saw him mercilessly scourged, spat upon, made fun of, struck on the face time and again? Imagine with your own mind and wild imagination, what will you, how will you respond if the same things were to be done to your own dad? Christ is for us more than a father or a mother. He is our saviour our God, our all. When reading about all that Jesus had to undergo during his passion, we wish we had been present to save him from all the indigency, indignities the soldiers heaped upon him. Yet we forget that it was our sins that moved the soldiers' hands to strike him or their filthy lips to spit on him. The motivator for those soldiers to do all these kinds of 
demeaning things were the result of our own sins. And let's move on to the sixth plot, crucifixion, death and burial of Jesus. Jesus has died. When our father or mother expires, we are reminded all of a sudden of all they have done for us. We feel sorry for not having responded well enough to their love. At death we cry. But while they are alive, we fail to ex express our gratitude and love for them. Same thing happens in the case of Jesus. The body of Jesus on the cross speaks to us in its silence more eloquently than a hundred preachers. What else could I do for you that I have not done? Each one of us should put to himself another question. What is, the, what is there that I should have done for Jesus and have not done? Simon of Cyrene helped him to carry his cross. Joseph of Arimathea lent him his own new tomb. Jesus, living and glorious in heaven, is not in need of anything. But he takes as, takes as done unto himself whatever we do to our brothers in need. We have an ample field to repay Jesus for his love. There is no person around us whom we cannot help in some way or the other. All our life should be a continuous service to Christ in our neighbor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's all stand and profess our faith. Take the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he became down, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken, spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray together as a family that during this holy week we may gather abundantly the fruits of Jesus' suffering and death and thus get ready to share in the joy of his resurrection. We pray for Holy Mother, the Church, that his Holy Week may be a time of abundant blessings upon our Pope, pastors and people of God to live and to proclaim the good news of Christ. We pray, Lord, Lord graciously hear our prayer. We pray for the rulers and lawmakers of our country that they may enact and pass just laws, work of peace, harmony, and prosperity of all citizens. We pray, Lord, graciously hear our prayer. We pray for Christians who are persecuted for their faith, that they may enjoy blessings of freedom, 
patience and courage to stand for their religious faith and values in all circumstances. We play, pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear, our our prayer. hear our prayer. We pray for those suffering from sickness, those languishing in jails, those confined to old age homes and orphanages, those abandoned and for whom there is no one to care for, that they may find their refuge and strength in suffering Christ. We pray, Lord, Lord graciously hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the dead, that they may rise to a new life of eternal joy and peace with God in heaven. We pray, Lord, Lord graciously hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for our personal intentions. Father in heaven, your beloved Son Jesus suffered and died to save us. Help us to join him in his suffering throughout our life and to die with him and in his friendship when our moment comes. Thus we shall be sure of joining him in his resurrection and in his glory with you. We ask this through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your, your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our, our good and the good of all this holy church. church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that Though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by it this sacrifice made once for all, 
we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death was washed away, has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Sing Hosanna in your praise. He is blessed who comes in the name of the Lord. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Praise the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took the bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Jesus who died, is now glorified. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Paul Antony our Archbishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O 
God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a meaningful sign of peace. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer for Spiritual Communion my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above, above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come into my heart spiritually. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself to you only. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
of splendor you are good oh good are you of all goodness so and tender great are you and good and true Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for that we believe. So by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray to Saint Joseph. Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted His only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a Father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. 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 Dear friends, this evening at 6 p.m. we have Mass in Telugu followed by Eucharistic Adoration. Hero Sayantram Aru Aru Gantulaki Telugu Lo Puja Mariyu Divesa Prasada Aradhana Pratyaksha Prasaram Chevartundi. Pavitra Guru Varam Shukru Varam Easter Sunday Pujalu Karekramalani Vishagapatnam St. Peter's Cathedral Nundi Pratyaksha Prasaram Autai. The masses and the services of the Holy Week concerning Holy Thursday, Good Friday and Easter Sunday will be made live from Vishakhapatnam St. Peter's Cathedral and uh, we request all of you to follow them through the Divyavani TV. And today's mass is offered for Archdiocese of Hyderabad, Gun Foundry Parish. Mass offered by the Vivani TV Corpus Fund donor Madhila Agnes and family members for the departed soul of Madhila Peter and other departed souls in the family of Madhila Arulappa, Madhila Mariamma, Anna Mary, Varakala Joseph, Madhila Aruna by Madhila Anil, Mary Irene, Dharan Akila, Aaron, Samuel. Tiana Grace and today's Rosary Divine Mercy Chaplet, Word of God, Holy Hour are also offered for this family and their intentions. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Pray for God's blessings. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be 
delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go and live this celebration. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Always singing praise.